In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the new non-destructive landscape layers that were introduced in 4.24. These new landscape layers allow you to non-destructively modify and adjust your landscapes. So you can add different layers and for each layer, you can modify your height map, sculpt your landscape, paint textures, and have that information contained and preserved within a layer. And then you can adjust that layer, its intensity, its influence, independently from any other layers and from your main landscape. And if you worked with landscapes before, you know that everything you modified was part of the same height map. And it was very difficult to readjust or change something if you already sculpted that information. And with the addition of the landscape layers, you can now focus on creating landscapes a lot quicker and adjust your work, your height map and your textures in real time, non-destructively. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the landscape layers with the sculpting tools. And then in another tutorial, I'm going to show you how to paint textures with the landscape layers. So let's get to it. First, in order to use the non-destructive landscape layers, you have to have Unreal Engine 4 version 4.24 or later. There are two ways to enable landscape layers. First is when you create a new landscape. So here I'm going to go into the landscape mode. I'll have the standard default landscape creation screen. And before you hit create, you have to come up here at the top and enable edit layers. And once you have that enabled, go ahead and hit create. Under the sculpt menu, right here on the bottom, you will have your edit layers. And if you switch over to the paint menu, you will have the same set of layers. I'm going to go ahead and switch over back to Sculpt because that's what we're going to focus on in this tutorial. If you have a landscape already created, such as if you created one from previous versions of Unreal without using the landscape layers, you can enable edit layers on existing landscapes. To do that, select the landscape, then go into the Details panel, Scroll down on the landscapes and click on to enable edit layers. Once you do, a menu will pop up telling you that you will clear any undo redo buffer. This means you won't be able to undo this. So go ahead and click yes. And then once you do, this landscape will now have the ability to add and edit layers. Now, whatever information you have on your landscape right now, this will be your base. So you won't start from a flat landscape like we did when we created a new landscape. Because since you already have information in it, this becomes your base. And it will be contained within the default first layer. Alright, so let's go back to our flat default landscape that we just created. This is where we're going to start from. I'm going to switch over to landscape mode and the sculpt tool. And when you create a landscape and you've enabled edit layers, you will have your first default base layer already created. And I like to leave this layer as is without modifying it. This way I can always come back to this flat landscape. This layer will be my base. And anything that I sculpt will be done in their own layers. So I'm going to go ahead and pull off the modes panel so you can see better. And I'm going to press F11 to go full screen. And now I'm going to create a new layer. And this is where I'm going to begin to create changes in the height map and sculpt the landscape. To create a new layer, come over to the menu and right click right over the first base layer. Menu will pop up and here you want to choose create. This will create a new layer and place it right on top of our first layer, our base layer. And with this layer selected, and it's very important that you select the layer where you want to apply the changes onto. So I have my layer one selected. I'm going to go ahead and choose the tools that I want to use. In this case, I want to sculpt the initial blackout of the terrain. I'm going to modify a few settings and begin sculpting the terrain. Whatever I sculpt will be placed into the selected layer. And once you have something sculpted, you can go back to your layer and you can disable its visibility to see what you've done by clicking on this eye icon. And it's not doing it in real time until I update the viewport by moving my mouse in it. So to see everything in real time, make sure you have real time enabled. 
So whatever I just sculpted, these mountains, these shapes, are contained within this one layer, while we still have our base layer, the flat landscape, untouched. And this is the power of landscape layers. You can place different sculpting elements for blackout, for detail, for erosion, for noise, for smooth, onto their own layers. Let's rename the layers so we know what information they contain. You can rename by right clicking on the layer and then choosing rename. And I'm going to name this one base. And I'm also going to click on this lock icon to lock this layer. This will prevent me from editing that layer. And then let's rename this one. And instead of right clicking, you can left click twice on the name of that layer and then rename it. And I'm going to name this one blackout and press enter. Another important layer setting is the alpha. This is the intensity of that layer. By default, it's set to one, full intensity. So if I think these mountains on this layer are a bit too much, I can reduce the alpha to lower their intensity. And you don't have to stick between zero and one. You can go into the negative value from zero to negative one. And this will invert the effect. So this is very powerful. Next, let's create another layer and we're going to sculpt some detail. I'm going to right click, choose create, and I'm going to go ahead and rename this layer to detail. I'm going to choose the erosion tool, adjust a few settings, and then begin to apply. And I'm just going to go ahead and quickly create some erosion, some detail on what I've sculpted. And again, it's very important that you have that layer selected onto which you want to apply this detail to. This way, this detail, this erosion, is contained within that one layer. And it's very easy to mess up by applying the effect onto the wrong layer. Nothing bad will happen. You just you want to maintain each effect or a different change or adjustment to the landscape to individual layers. So it's easier to edit later. I'm going to toggle layer visibility to see what effect it created. And I'm going to lower the alpha the intensity of the layer to 0.75. So it's not as strong. And then I'm going to create another layer. And on this layer, I'm going to apply noise to the terrain. I'm going to rename the layer to noise. Then select the noise tool. Adjust a few settings. And making sure that I have the noise layer selected. It will also help if you lock all the other layers so you know for sure you're not going to be affecting them by accident. And then I'm going to begin going over the landscape, painting in the noise, just on that one noise layer. So kind of adding additional detail and some more height map variation. And then the intensity, I think it's a bit too strong. So I'm going to lower the alpha for that layer to 0.8. And then I'm going to create one more and last layer. And on this layer, I'm going to smooth out some of the rougher parts of the terrain. I'm going to select the smooth tool, make sure I have detail smooth enabled, so we don't paint over the noise and erosion detail we already sculpted. And then just begin going over and smooth some parts out. And this is the basic workflow of working with layers. Whenever you're going to do something to the terrain that changes its height map, you create a new layer for that step for that process. And then you sculpt modifying the landscape on that layer. And you don't have to keep the layers separate. You can just sculpt smooth and noise onto the same layer. But for more control, I like to separate them and place each effect, each tool that I do to the terrain onto its own layer. This way I can always go back and tweak a certain effect at any time. Let me show you a few more things that you should know. Every time you create a new layer, that layer is additive. This means that when you add a new layer, it does nothing to your landscape until you begin to paint something in and modify the terrain. So I just created a new layer and you can see that it has no effect until I begin to sculpt something in. So let's say I want to test something out and I want to see this mountain with a different shape. So I'm going to drastically change how this looks by lowering part of this mountain then doing some heavy erosion and smooth to it. And now if I disable the visibility, 
we can go back and see what we had before and see if I like what I just changed. And I can go into the intensity and modify the alpha to go into the negative value to invert the effect. So again, with layers, you can really test things out and see if you want to change certain parts of your landscape to be a lot different than they were before. So you have a lot more artistic and creative control without destroying the work you've already done. And then if I don't like whatever I sculpted on that layer, I can right click on the layer and choose clear. And I can clear the information that I sculpted in this one specific layer. And I can clear the sculpt or I can clear all. All meaning that if I painted any textures, it would clear the textures and the sculpting. I'm going to clear the sculpt and choose yes. And now this layer is empty again. I'm going to go ahead and undo so we get that information back. And if you want to delete the layer completely, right click on it and choose delete. That layer and all the information in it will now be gone. A very useful visualizer that you can take a look at how each layer is affecting the landscape. If you go to lit visualizers and enable layer contribution. And if you select a layer, it will show you the contribution or the effect of that layer on the landscape. So this is very helpful to see how each layer and the information in it is affecting your landscape. Let's go ahead and turn that off. Go to lit visualizers and click normal. There is one more tool we need to cover and that is erase. So under your sculpt menu, choose erase. And I'm going to quickly hit undo a few times to bring back our test layer. And with it selected and the erase tool enabled, I'm going to adjust the tool strength. And the erase tool allows me to erase the information within that layer. So if I don't want to clear it or delete it and redo the work, and I like something that I've done within the layer, but not all of it, I can erase the information that I don't want and keep what I do want and just erase part of the information within that layer. And last, if you decide to disable edit layers functionality on a landscape where you already have layers, be very careful of doing so because you will lose all of your layers and the ability to edit them. So I'm going to jump back into place mode, select the landscape, and go into the details panel. If I scroll down to landscape and disable edit layers, a warning will come up telling me that if I disable, I will lose the data stored in each layer and undo redo buffer will be cleared, means that I cannot undo this function. So if I click yes, I will still have the information that I've sculpted, but everything will be merged down to a single height map, to a single layer, and all of our layers that we worked on will be gone. So it's not something I recommend you do. But if you decide to merge everything down and get rid of all your layers, you do have that option. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and got a lot out of it. Please give it a like, subscribe. And if you want to learn how to create landscapes and how to use all the sculpting tools so you can create landscapes and use the landscape layers more efficiently, I have a tutorial course that will teach you everything you need to know for how to sculpt landscapes and create landscape materials entirely inside UE4. It's called UE4 Fundamentals Volume 2 Landscapes Essentials. And I highly recommend you pick that up if you want to be more proficient at creating landscapes with UE4.